So let us start with the next practical, right? Uh, so in the previous practical, we have seen the graphical user interface that is UI of this uh, software workbench, uh, that is ANSYS workbench. So all of you know that uh, how to start the software, right? Uh, okay. So in a start menu, there is one option that is ANSYS, right? And in that you have to see for the ANSYS workbench. Okay. Now when we open this workbench, uh, you will get this window, right? Uh, okay. So in this window, you will observe the uh, options like file, view, tools, units, and help like this, uh, just like uh, any other uh, software, right? Uh, is it a screen is visible, no? Yes, I think. Okay. So then uh, here you will get the toolbox, right? Uh, so that is uh, in toolbox, you will observe the uh, different tools like uh, design assessment, electric analysis, especially dynamics, right? Uh, the, these are the what analysis tools actually. Right, uh, so different analysis systems are there. You can do the electric analysis here. You can do the expression dynamic analysis, uh, fluid related, that is CFX and fluent analysis. We can do that is CFG part. Uh, then harmonic response is there, linear buckling analysis. We can do for the civil structures and columns, right? Then magnetostatic analysis, we can do for the electrical part and physical uh, physics uh, part. Model that is a uh, random vibration spectrum, uh, response spectrum vibration. These are what a uh, part of vibration and a uh, vibrational analysis. Then uh, the shape optimizations we can do. Static structure is a uh, regular our uh, analysis part for a mechanical civil part. Uh, we can say domain. Then the steady test, uh, straight thermal uh, is again we can say the mechanical uh, part of the analysis, right? In which we are doing the steady state thermal analysis. The thermal electric analysis that is combination of electric and thermal analysis we can do here the transient structural and transient thermal analysis also we can do then here uh, you will see the different again modules right for only meshing for uh, cfd and cfx part for uh, you can see the engine data is also there right uh, engine data so you can uh, add the materials here in the engine data right uh, you can just click and you can see here Right, uh, as earlier also we have discussed in the previous session, uh, this is what actually a library, material library, right? When we click on this uh, engine data source here, right? So here we will get uh, uh, different types of material that is general materials, general non-linear materials. Okay, uh, you can just drop down here, uh, expressiate materials, hyperelastic materials, uh, then the uh, magnetic, uh, BH codes, thermal uh, materials, right? When we click on thermal materials, you will get the different thermal materials here in the bottom of the session, right? Now let us say for uh, the general materials, uh, you can see here uh, what uh, the different general materials are there. So it is a structure steel, air, aluminum alloy, concrete, copper alloy, right? Uh, here, uh, if we observe this type of dictionary, that means in your library, the structure steel is added, right? If you want to add the aluminum alloy, you can add that just by clicking on that material, right? You can add uh, any material. General non-linear materials are also there, aluminum alloy, co concrete alloy, but stainless steel and other things. Uh, well, then uh, the hyperelastic materials are there, right? Uh, okay, so thermal materials are also there, copper, aluminum oxide, uh, right? Uh, different bakelite and other. Okay, so according to the applications, you can use these uh, materials, right? You can add in your li library. Just click on this plus sign. Right after adding this material, right? Uh, you can uh, add a new library also, right? So you just click here. Uh, here click here to add a new library. You can just type the uh, library here. Okay, and uh, in that library, you can uh, add the new material also, right? Uh, so let us say for in this library, right? Let us say I want to add the library, it says, okay, let's say file name will be SS. Okay. So you can see here one library is created, right? So in that library, you can add a new material also, right? So I will just press, say, uh, click here to add a new material. Okay, so you can add any material. Uh, let us say WSS. So when you type the material name, uh, here you can see you can edit the its material properties, right? Uh, that is physical properties, uh, all the density and other thing, right? When I click on density, then you can mention the density of that material, right? Uh, then you can mention the isotropic uh, pro elasticity properties of that material. That is uh, Angst modulus Poisson ratio, right? Uh, the blue, uh, sorry, uh, the yellow color shows that uh, the data is incomplete, right? So you have to mention that data. Okay. If you have any query, uh, right, you just stop me and ask me in between this session. So here you can add the materials, right, uh, data, and modulus and portion ratio. Okay, and after adding this data, 
percent uh, random uh, taking the any values, right? So you can just and after that you can add this, right? But here it is saying uh, yes, it is actually the font. So you can just add that also. Is in edit mode, right? So I will say just an update project. So just uh, by uh, mentioning any error, I am just putting the random values actually, so that's why it is not hitting. But you can uh, put the proper values of that material and you can add that material, right? So I will delete this part of material, uh, remove from the list. This is also, I think, we will remove it from the list. Okay, so after that, uh, we'll say just an update project and we can return to the main menu, right? So this is part of an engine data actually, right? I will delete that also. The other uh, parts are there for geometry creation. You just click. Uh, it is for only the geometry creation, right? As all of you know that uh, there is one modeling tool, uh, window or modeling tool is there in the ANSYS, right? In that we can model the a uh, part. So you can take the uh, dimension. You can select and you can just model it, right? So this is what a design modeler actually. So different uh, component systems are there in the component system, right? Uh, then custom systems are there, right? Uh, uh, for uh, fl uh, CFX and fluent, right? Uh, and static structure, that is fluid, in, uh, fluid and structure interaction part, you can use that. Design explosions are there, right? For optimization part. Okay, Six Sigma analysis and other thing. But this is not for our requirement or uh, at this stage, uh, you are an, for an undergraduate, right? So we are mainly focusing on the static structure analysis and the thermal analysis, steady state thermal analysis. There is one analysis also we have to do the couple field analysis, right? So that is combination uh, static and thermal analysis. Okay, our structure and thermal analysis we can see, right? Our thermal electric analysis. So out of this, uh, any two or three, we can take one. Okay, so let us take a static structure analysis. Now, in the previous session, we have just, I think, taken one cantilever beam, right? And uh, in that beam, the uh, it is subject to some load uh, that we have taken. Uh, as it is a cantilever beam, so that's why we have taken the one boundary condition as a fixed end, and other is, uh, we can say, a free end. Okay. So, uh, you know, for that, uh, you can see that um, the deflections, whatever we are getting in the previous session. Okay. Uh, we have seen that, and I, I think uh, uh, I have prepared the video on that also. I will, today, I will share that video on uh, Google Classroom also. You can just uh, uh, ch check that video, right? Uh, okay, so then in this case, uh, you can see here uh, the next part for our uh, practical session is uh, the uh, stress concentration factor, right? Uh, what is the next part? It actually, this is a PDL part. Okay, so static stress concentration factor calculation, right? Uh, for a plate with I, uh, with center hole subjected to axial loading in a tension using FEA software. Okay, so by using FEA software, we have to calculate the static stress concentration factor, right? Uh, that is stress concentration factor, all right? Uh, so by using FEA software. So the plate dimensions are given 1,500, uh, then phi is what, uh, 50? At this position, you can see, right? It is a diameter is given 50. Then 12 kilonewton load is acting on the one side. Okay, that means at this side. Okay, so and for this case, you have to find out the st stress concentration factor. So can anyone tell me what is in by stress concentration? You can unmute yourself and just uh, let me. I, I think uh, that uh, is not visible. I am just sharing that. Just wait a minute. Entire screen solve for that. Okay, now I think uh, this will be visible. Okay, so this is what our uh, next uh, practical that is static stress concentration factor calculation for a plate with center hole subjected to axial loading in a tension using FA software. Uh, is it clear for all? Uh, can anyone tell me? This is visible, I think. Is it visible? Okay, thank you, Rishikesh. So, static stress concentration factor calculation for a plate with center hole subjected to axial loading in a tension using FA software. Now, here you can see the plate is given, right, uh, which is having a uh, 1000 mm length, 
and then uh, if you have 500 mm it's uh, let's say uh, height is given right uh, and the uh, 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 550 that is center a hole is given at the center right which is having radius as 25 mm the thickness of plate is given as 10 mm you can see here right and then angst modulus is 210 a gpa and uh, position ratio of this uh, uh plate material is 0.3 right so these two properties are given material so for this we have to find out the uh, stress concentration factor so can anyone tell me what is my stress concentration so can anyone tell me what is stress concentration now Oh, sorry uh what is in by stress concentration what is been by stress concentration what is in by stress concentration factor this part you studied i think in your third year right in design of machine element subject dme1 or dme2 Hello. What is in by stress concentration or stress concentration factor? Awaz ete ka maza. Eji file da koli li word file ti pahili ka sakan ni. Atta mi share ke li hoti ti. Ki wapura tek da dakhu ka tumala. Thik hai. Te check kara. Screen this thing, I word file. No, sir. My this at car. Magashi Saluzalutica screen this Lilika to Mala. His word file egg share kill you. Titi. As a Magashi is with Athana. This is a minute at number for the protect the maker. Ata, this tena. Just maybe do stress his own mobile or open login column to Tomajamala Kail to Malak. Okay, so uh, right, our next uh, that is this is our uh, two days practical, right? We have to perform the uh, stress uh, that means we have to calculate the stress concentration factor for a plate with circular hole, right? So he can see the given data is given for this problem. 
so that is uh, the uh, plate dimensions are given uh, then the uh, uh, whole uh, diameter is given you can see here right uh, then the uh, width and height thickness of the plates are given that is 1000 mm 510 mm, mm respectively radius of circle is given and uh, some material data is given that is the uh, Young's modulus and Poisson ratio you can see here okay so now here the aim of this practical right is that a uh, static stress concentration factor calculation for a plate with the center hole subject to axial loading in a tension using FPS of plate so we have to calculate the static stress, stress concentration factor so what is the best stress concentration factor or uh, where uh, we will get the st stress concentration right where uh, the stresses will be developed what is in best stress concentration or what is in best stress concentration factor Now I will uh, move towards the workbench, right? Uh, so before that, starting this practical, just uh, tell me what is the stress concentration factor. Tell me what is in best stress concentration factor. Right. Uh, Stress concentration means what? Uh, uh, whenever there is an uh, object, right, and it is subjected to uh, some forces, right. Uh, so obviously, due to that force, right, uh, some stresses will be developed in the object, right. If there are some uh, abrupt changes in that uh, object or in that player, we can say system, right. So there will be more stresses will be developed at near to that. Uh, we can say the uh, abrupt changes or near to that discontinuity. We can say, right. Okay. So in that and near to that discontinuity stresses will be more, right? And so if you take the ratio of these your maximum stresses uh, to the nominal stress in the plate or in that system, we'll get uh, we'll calling it as an uh, its stress concentration factor, right? So that is just it's a uh, we can say uh, uh, ratio of uh, maximum stress to the nominal stress in the system. Okay. Now in case of this uh, uh, plate, right? Uh, that means a plate with hole. It is subjected to a tensile load. Uh, let us say for P force. Okay. So obviously, uh, in the plate, uh, in that plate, uh, it is a uh, fixed at one end and it is loaded on the other end. There will be uh, more stresses will be developed in which area or in which region? Can anyone tell me? In the plate with hole. That means in this uh, example. Where will be the maximum stresses will develop? The plate is subjected to a tensile load of 12 kN. One end is fixed. A hole is provided at the center of that plate having a diameter of 50 mm. Right? Uh, near to the side of this hole. Obviously, that is correct. Okay, Rushikesh. Thank you. So, uh, near to that uh, hole, right? Uh, or we can say near to that uh, the discontinuity. Here, discontinuity in the material is due to that hole, right? So, in, in near to that discontinuity, or we can say in near to that abrupt change in the shape of that uh, uh, object, right? Uh, the stresses will be developed is maximum. So, the ratio of this maximum stresses developed in that element, right, to the nominal stress applied, uh, yeah, will get the stress concentration factor. 
So remember that uh, for a circular hole, right? Uh, the stress concentration factor will be uh, how much is value for a hole? Can anyone tell me? It's generally taken as a reference value. Stress concentration factor value. Actually, it is a ratio of uh, two stresses, right? So it has uh, no unit. It is in a unitless parameter, right? So there is some standard values, right? As per the mathematical calculation. So can anyone tell me how much it is? You can just remind that and you, whenever you get the answer, you just uh, stop me and uh, tell me, right? So other, uh, I, I will start with the uh, practical now. Just remind, uh, try to uh, find, uh, remind that the values of the uh, stress concentration factor for a circular hole in a plate, right? Uh, you have studied that part in the your design of machine element one or two, I think, right? So definitely you have studied in that. But uh, at this stage, you are not, I think, uh, remembering that part, right? Uh, so just try to remind that part. Okay, so now let us start with for a practical. Now you can see we have started with the static structural. I, I hope that this is visible for all, right? Okay, now in static structure, again, these are the steps. All of you know that now, uh, the, what are the steps to follow the uh, analysis or uh, to find, uh, do the analysis, right, uh, for a static structure. So here you can see the uh, first is you, you have selected the type of analysis, it is static structure. The second is that you are uh, you have to select the engine data. Okay, so in engine data, let us say we will see a uh, select as a material uh, from the material library, right, uh, that is from the general materials. So for a structure still, how much it is the properties are uh, we will see that for uh, it is 210 gpa okay and the poisson ratio is 0.3 okay so uh, angst modulus is uh, 210 gpa right so how much it is So it is same 2.1 into oh, right 10 to the one. So by, by default, the for structure still the properties are uh, whatever we uh, require, right? That is 210 GPA and 0.3. Uh, we can say uh, Poisson ratio is 0.3. You can see here a Poisson ratio is also 0.3. Okay, so the, you are selecting the material as a structural steel. Now let us say let us say update the project. Okay, if the values are different, then you can go in a material add a new library in that you can add the new material and you can give it these properties right but it is available you can directly take that material now go to the return to the project right now you have selected the material you can see here a green color tick mark is showing right still uh okay so you can see here uh, the green color tick mark is showing right uh at this uh, engine data, okay? So now next step is uh, creating a geometry, right? You can import the geometry or you can uh, create a geometry. Let us, we will create that geometry in the design model. So just uh, double click on that. Okay. So here, uh, select the unit. Uh, is it taking too much time for uh, showing the screen? Is it like that? Actually, I started on the mobile also and on the PC also. So I'm getting some delay time in mobile. Is it for all uh, it, or it is for only me? What about uh, the Abhishek or Ankush and Chetan? Design model let's see screen open the link at home jay there no sir work bench is up with that main windows up with it just a minute why it is showing like that Entire screen, okay. Entire screen, 
सॉफ्टवेअर ओपन केला मग एंटर स्क्रीन ठीक आहे ओके आता चेक करा बरं विंडो विजिबल आहे का का नाही दिसत अजून पण हा सर आता विजिबल आहे ओके आणि हे डिझाईन मॉडेलर ओपन झालंय का हा येस सर ओके इथे अँसिस नॉन दिसतंय ना तुम्हाला हे डिझाईन मॉडेलर ओके एनिवे anyway, माझ्या मोबाईल मध्ये दिसत नाही माईट बी काय प्रॉब्लेम आहे सर नेटवर्कचा वगैरे ठीक आहे सो डिझाईन मॉड्युलर्स मध्ये लेफ्ट साईडला जी ट्री दिसते राईट ट्री आउटलाईन मध्ये त्यामध्ये कॉर्डिनेट्स काय काय दिसतात तुम्हाला ते सांगा बरं सिरियली एक्स वाय प्लेन झेड एक्स प्लेन वाय झेड प्लेन ओके सो देन यू कॅन सी हिअर यू कॅन इन दिस अ डिझाईन मॉड्युलर राईट दिस इज अ डिझाईन मॉड्युलर फॉर दि अँड सीज दिस इज जनरली यूज फॉर मॉड्युलिंग दि सिस्टीम्स ऑर दि कम्पोनंट इन दिस राईट ओके वी कॅन वी कॅन जस्ट क्रिएट अ थ्री डी मॉड्यूल इन दिस मॉड्यूल राईट अँड देन वी कॅन इम्पोर्ट फॉर दि मेशिंग अँड अदर प्री प्रोसेसिंग पार्ट अँड सोल्युशन पार्ट ओके सो दिस इज जस्ट वॉट वी कॅन सी अ पोस्ट प्रोसेसिंग फेज अवर Uh, sorry it's a pre processing phase and uh, after that we can uh, take it for the next uh, solution and other parts so process post processing phases so here uh, let us we will create the geometry of that plate right as you know that the geometry is like this okay a plate is there uh, which is having a length is uh, 100 mm or we can say the width is 100 mm height is 500 mm thickness is 10 mm radius of circle which is uh, that means for a hole is 25 mm so let's we create that geometry here let us take you can select any one plane let's say i select the xy plane okay then i will just uh, see uh, is in a front view only okay here you can take as isometric also or you can see uh, take any single view also now after that you can go here in the sketching okay now when we uh, see, click on sketching you will get the different options like draw modify dimensions constraints and setting right like any other uh, softwares right uh, for modeling softwares now in draw you can see you, you, we will just draw one rectangle right okay and we required the hole at the center so we will draw one hole uh, circle also right it is a hole is circular so we will draw the uh, circle right at the center now we have to give the constraints to this geometry right now as uh, uh, we have just drawn uh, that means we have drawn this uh, circle at the center so it is obviously by default it is constraint but for this rectangle we have to give some constraints so let us say symmetry okay that means uh, about this horizontal axis do these two edges and again uh, the symmetry for vertical axis that means these two vertical edges okay now go for the dimensioning right uh, that is the dimensioning it might be you can see the horizontal dimensioning right uh, just click on horizontal or you can general you can select the general also right and uh, just select the edges for which we have to mention the dimension now when we uh, select uh, that means if the uh, body become an constraint you can observe that it is shown in a uh, blue color right so uh, again dimension for this also so this circle becomes again a, we can say a blue that is it is a fully constraint the geometry is fully constraint right uh, if again you you will give one dimension then it becomes in uh, you can see in this type of uh, color right it sh should be like uh, maroon color right or reddish color so that should be uh, in the, that indicate that your geometry is over constraint right and that is not actually required in the modeling okay so it should be uh, your geometry should be in blue color right that means it, it should we can say that it is a constraint fully constraint to your geometry now let us give the dimensions to these uh, edges or uh, 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 the hole right and so here in detail view right in detail view you can see here at this d3 h1 and a uh, v2 these are the dimensions in dimension section you can see d3 d3 h1 and v2 d3 is what here you can uh, see right d3 is circle is a diameter of what it is circle circle diameter is given as 50 so mention that 50 mm then h1 is horizontal dimension it is given as 100 mm well, sorry 100 not uh, it is 1000 mm so mention that 1000 same for uh, this uh, vertical dimension it is given as 500 so mention that v2 has 500 okay 
after that this is your drawing okay now you have to do the modeling of this sketch okay so we have drawn this sketch in xy plane now go for the isometric view let us say okay now go for the extrude part okay i will extrude that drawing okay so you can extrude the base object that is sketch is selected this sketch okay then uh, here you can see the depth that is the thickness of that uh, plate here you can see the thickness is given as 10 mm right so just take the uh, thickness as a 10 mm you can mention here thickness is 10 mm okay and uh, we can say that generate right when we click on generate you will see that a uh, plate is drawn right uh, uh, it is generated with a center hole at uh, uh, of diameter 50 mm right a plate is having a width as 1000 mm height as 500 mm and hole is having diameter of 50 mm so this is our actual geometry right okay now let us move towards the next part okay so i will close this uh, design model and now you can see after creating a geometry here the tick mark is shown right that means when we uh, initially you can see all oh, these types of uh, status will be there right like a question mark but when we create a geometry it will be a green tick mark you can see here now here the model is remaining right the meshing part is remaining i will just delete this so go for the modeling part right so in that uh, fourth step you can do the next uh, steps also that is fifth six and seven all these steps are comes under the modeling part that is your pre-processing phase uh, then the solution phase and then your post-processing phase okay so it's just uh wait a minute it is loading okay so this is uh the our model right uh the plate with the center hole now uh, you can see here the steps that is four five and six right uh that uh, here you can see also four five and six okay so these are also here in the project uh, tree four uh that is model uh, then static structure that is five and six a four a five a six because this is your a, a project is a right so that's why a four a five if it is a b there will be b other uh, other uh, right uh, c uh, whatever it may be so in the model right you can see here uh, the geometry is this one right it is a single uh, geometry actually if it is a, a consists of number of components right if it is an assembly we'll uh, see that here number of parts will be shown here uh, below that geometry right so here it is only a single part so that's why it is showing us one solid only then you can coordinate system you can see the uh, global coordinates right uh, and the other uh, coordinate systems right so here uh, the global is this one coordinate system for now next uh, you can see the meshing right uh, you can do the mesh uh, it is not generator actually but you can just right click on here and you can say the generate mesh so after uh, condition condition after generating the uh, meshing okay so you will see you will observe that the meshing will be like this okay but here uh, there is a, a discontinuity right so that's why uh, near to that discontinuity the meshing will be like this but if you see this uh, this meshing will create uh, some which types of error you can can anyone tell me if we are uh, doing the analysis on this uh, meshing in meshing we have seen the uh, type of error right it is which type of error it is actually a circular right you can see here you can see here right this is actually a circular shape but uh, this type of error uh, we are calling it as 
it is discretization error we have seen that right in the introduction session so these are this will create an a discretization errors right because uh, the what are the shape actually it is circular but uh, here you can see the due to these uh, types of meshing right uh, here only a lines are generated so we can change the meshing right so we can make it as a uh, refine mesh refinement okay and uh, on this geometry let's say apply and we can see the generate mesh okay so you can see the refinement in the meshing okay so now in this case if you see that okay so tetrahedrons uh, mesh are used right uh, so it it is too uh, too fine right you can find that with the help of relevance also so that will uh, uh, remove our uh, discretization errors right or meshing errors you can see here okay in the cut section also you can see the meshings right uh, this is actually our meshing okay now i will just close it okay now can anyone tell me what's the next uh, process or next step i want the answer from your side now fix support yes uh, who is telling me who is there rushikesh rushikesh okay thank you uh, fix support means what actually in today's session uh, lecture session also we are discuss on that uh, topic what is actually uh, that is boundary condition right applying boundary condition is it correct yes sir okay so for this problem right if the problem is like this uh, i think it is visible right a plate which is fixed at one end a load is acting 12 kN on this so can you even tell me what are the uh, proper uh, what is the boundary condition in this case for this plate what is the actual boundary condition we have to apply the fixed support at one end and we have to apply the load at other end is it right well kN and here at the fixed end so let us we will say that applying the boundary condition right that is in static structure you can see here the inertial effect is there loads are there and support is there we have to support we have to give the support right that is we have to fix this support so this face is fixed for this plate let's say it is applied okay so you can see here a blue color arrow is showing right the blue color indicates that it is a fixed support that means this face is fixed now go for the next that is the loading right that is a force force how much force we have to apply on this face right how much it is 500 right it is uh, no it is 12 kN so 12 kN you can see that right 12000 newton okay so it is applied in x direction for this coordinate system you can see if it is a tensile force right here it is given as tensile if it is given as compressive right if it is given a compressive then you have to what we have to do compressive asel the kay kare lagel aplyala ita tensile force hai barobar na tyam he barobar hai atta ji condition apply keleli suppose compressive asla asta to kay kele asta apan minus sign sir right correct here we can make as a minus 12000 So it becomes an compressive. You can see at the direction of that arrow is change, right? So here, but actually for this problem, we have tensile force, so we keep as it as it is twelve thousand, right? Now this is actually our boundary condition. Okay, now this is all your uh, up to this, right? That means uh, up to applying the boundary condition. This is our pre-processing. 
phase. Uh, next part is your solution phase. That, uh, that, that you know that there are three phases in the FA, uh, right? That means while we are solving the problem of FA, we have to follow the three phases. That is first is pre-processing, then solution, and next is post-processing phase. So up to this, it, it is a pre-processing phase. Now solution phase means uh, the problem is solved, right? Uh, your problem is solved in that phase. So you can just uh, say our uh, solid, right? Uh, you can make right click and the problem is solved actually. Actually, what happened in that, whatever the discretization of, of that element uh, we have done, so of that system we have done, right? Uh, the problem is solved for each element. As we know that uh, in the today's session, yesterday's session, we are solving some few problems from that, right? So for these uh, all nodes, uh, right, and elements, the problem is solved, okay? Now that is element stiffness matrices are derived, right? Uh, then the global uh, load vectors are derived. Global, uh, you can say nodal uh, displacement uh, vectors are uh, derived, right? And it is solved actually. Then uh, next is post-processing phase. That means you can find out the different parameters. That is stresses, then the deformations, okay? Total deformations. So you can call that, calculate that. So this is what actually a deformation here it is a stress okay so you can see the animation okay So let us see where the maximum stress will be there. You can see near the hole, right? I think uh, earlier uh, someone has given the answer, right? Uh, the stress will be maximum near to the discontinuity or near to the hole. Obviously here also we are getting the stress is maximum near to that hole, okay? So the stress is maximum at this point. Okay, now what's, what's the value of that stress? You can see here, maximum value is 7.33, right? The maximum value is 7.33. Three, three okay and the nominal stresses in that is how much it is 2.3 right how much it is 2.3 let's say okay then what is your stress concentration factor for this problem can anyone tell me what is the your stress concentration factor value is coming in this problem This, uh, where it is a nominal, you can take this cross-sectional also. Let us say we are take this uh, say plane. Okay, so here at this, it is maximum, right? And let's say at this point, how much it is? Two point three nine, right? At the nominal, right? So, can anyone tell me what is the uh, stress concentration factor in this case? What's the value of stress concentration factor? I want the answer now from your side. Maximum value of this stress 3.066. 3.066. How you have calculated that value? Can anyone maximum tell? stress? Yeah, it is the ratio of maximum stress upon nominal stress. It is how much? Uh, maximum stress, what you value you have taken? Uh, 7.331. Right, and nominal stress, how much it is? 2.391. Okay, so that was just I'll click here, right? When I check here, uh, nominal stress, it is getting a 2.42, right? Big, uh, in this case. Okay, so another way for calculating the nominal stress uh, that we have applied a uh, value, you can calculate uh, th that stress. As you know that uh, the uh, 
the force is applied on this plane right so the plane is of 500 by 10 mm is it right the cross sectional area for this plate 500 by 10 mm is it correct what i'm saying is it correct area cross sectional area of this plate 500 mm by 10 mm is it correct 10 mm is thickness yes sir okay then a cross sectional area is known force is known so can we get the stress developed in that plane can we calculate the stress developed in that plane what is the formula for stress Hi, Salle. What is the formula for stress? Stress such a formula kai. E by A or F by A. Correct, Alfia. So that is your F by A. F is what? 12 kilonewton. So 12 divided by 500 into 10. How much it is? 12 kilonewton. That is 12,000 divided by 500 into 10. How much it is? Tell me the answer. The stress is in that plane. This is very simple. Alfia, your uh, formula you are given that is correct. F by A, right? Force per unit area. So, but here, F is how much? 12 kilonewton. That is 12,000 newton, right? Area is what? 500 into 10 of that sex, uh, section plane. Or section. It is uh, you are calculating Newton per meter square, Alfia. Two point four, right? Correct. Correct. It is 2.4 Newton per mm square. Uh, uh, Rushikesh or Shweb, your unit is what? For 2.4, which unit is there? It is Newton per mm square or Newton per meter square? Correct. Right. Uh, 2.4 Newton per mm square. Alfia, just check your calculation, right? Okay. Now the Rushikesh and Shweb, uh, sorry, Shweb, uh, you have given the correct answer. That is 2.4. Uh, Newton per mm square. So that is what your actual we can take as a nominal stress also for this problem, right? That is your nominal stress and maximum stress is you know that it is 7.33. So you can take, uh, do the calculation, right? 7.33 divided by 2.4. So it is nearly about 3.05. It is nearly about 3.05. So that is your stress concentration factor. It is 3.05. And remember that there is uh, the stress concentration for factor for a circular hole is a T, right? By theoretical, it is a T by theoretically, right? Here by uh, FEA method, we are getting as a 3.05, right? Obviously, there will be some discretization error, right? There will be some uh, mathematical errors in the problem, right? Over before uh, that means during the solving this problem. So that's why we are getting the error as 0 0.05. 7.33 divided by 2.4 okay is it clear for all now tell me in chat box yes or no are you uh, it is clear for all what is by stress concentration factor and how to calculate the stress concentration factor for the plate with a circular hole and uh, how to do the calculations for the same yes others only two or three students are in uh, replying. What about the others? Okay. I will mark the only attendance for those. Uh, they have mentioned the uh, their uh, response in the chat box, right? Others will be, we can say, only on. Uh... Okay. So now Dombai, Kalpesh, Suyok, Pradeep activated. Okay. So thank you. Uh, now next uh, if we make some changes here right now let us say I will just delete that uh, refinement right okay and I will just say that update the mesh and let's say I will see here relevance is also let's say zero and now I will solve this problem 
so uh, is the values are getting same or uh, is the values now getting different can anyone tell me same or different for the deformations and other uh, stress concentration factor and other it will be a same or it will be different now by changing the machine what is the effect of that i change the machine right you can see here the machine the machine will be like this actually pre for previous session we have make it as an uh, that means for previously we have make it as a fine right but uh, now i have changed it and uh, i just uh, deleted all the refinements right so is the answer will be same or different can even anyone, anyone tell me different sir different right correct because we have changed the machine obviously there will be uh, some more discretization error in that and your answer will be uh, we can say diverted uh, from its original uh, or whatever the accurate value you can see here the maximum stress we are getting at the 5.8 only and in previous session uh, in the previous uh, case we are getting it as a 7.2 like that okay how much it is we are getting it's 7.33 in the when we are making uh, that means we have made the refinement machine right so this is what the actual uh, the problem of APA, right okay My, uh, uh, it's all depend upon your machine right uh, it should be an uh, that means it all depend upon your machine selection and uh, proper discretization of your system. Okay, so that's why it is very important for FEA or uh, any uh, FEA software, uh, the machine should be proper, right? So that's why uh, you, you have to make it as an refined machine so that uh, the discretization errors will be less, okay, for this phase. And also we can make it as an refined also, right? That is relevance we can take as a 40. We can make a relevance uh, more than that also, right? Let's say 80, up to 100 you can make. What the change in that? Only your number of elements and nodes will be get increased. Okay, so in the statistics, you can see the number of nodes and number of elements here. So again, the stress value, you can solve for the stresses. So it is nearly about uh, 7.09 okay so these types of some uh, deviations will get but uh, it is near to that actual value right uh, but in the previous uh, we have got as 5.22 it is very too much uh, deviation right so this is uh, actually the problem of fea right so but it will be a very uh, we can say trial uh, it can be used for uh, the test and trial and analysis part okay we cannot trust on these results we have to cross check these results also with some mathematical steps right or some experimental steps to validate this result okay so as uh, we have uh, stress concern we know that the value of stress concentration factor for a circle is nearly about three so that's why we can say that here the stresses must be near to the 7.12 or 7. 2515 near to that okay so that is your correct answer so we can say at this stage this is your uh, we have completed the uh, next uh, that is your practical on the i think it is fifth number practical that is practical on the uh, static plate uh, which is having a hole right for the calculation of stress concentration factor that is statistic uh, static stress concentration factor calculation for a plate with a center hole right Okay, now if any query in this, you can see. I will share this lab manual with you also. Right here, the steps of APDL are given, right? But you can do that on in APDL also, or you can do that on the workbench also, right? But uh, this workbench is very uh, uh, advanced version compared to that APDL, right? Uh, so that's why I'm just uh, introducing on the workbench, right? Oh, yeah. You can do that on the APDL also, right? As an assignment part. Okay, if the ANSI software is uh, available with you. Okay, so here the steps are given for the APDL. Okay, so all these steps are same, right? You can see here one by one also. Uh, so here, uh, what are the actual geometry is created here? Okay, so here you can see the pre-processor phase is there, the next uh, solution and post-processor phase. Here the geometry is created, uh, that's the rectangle is created. Its coordinates are given for creating the rectangle, width and heights are given. Okay, same here for the circle uh, is created having radius 25, we, uh, its coordinates are given. So this geometry is created, you can see here. Okay, now material is selected, uh, the isotropic material is selected. Uh, 2.1 is, uh, it's uh, you can see the uh, 
it's a gp uh, what uh, it is given you can see it is young's model is given right that is 210 uh, gigapascal is given so mm -hmm. and the poisson ratio is given as i think 0.3 only right so that uh, here it is mentioned you can see okay then uh, after that uh, the type of element is selected here for the meshing that is a eight noded uh, 183 mm -hmm. no uh, element is selected right uh, then the shape and we, we factor of that is selected it is quadrilateral then the uh, element formulation for pure displacements okay the real constant uh, sets are mentioned here you can see the meshing here okay meshing is done then uh, you can set the uh, you can apply the boundary conditions just like what we applied that is fixed support and load right so that we can apply it. and the solution you can get here one my stresses okay so we'll get the stress value here okay so maximum it is 7.35 we are getting in this for right and uh, same for uh, the uh, workbench we are uh, the first uh, case right we have got that 7.3 right uh, so same values that here also we are getting and the stress constant factor is nearly about we can say 2.76 okay so actually it is nearly equal to the three what we have got it is uh, the it, this is what uh, just an example right uh, but uh, we in today's uh, practical session we have got the accurate value right nearly about a uh, 3.03 .03, like that okay actual value should matter by uh, theoretically the value is 3 and we have got the 3.03 .03. only 0.3 uh, uh, mm uh, sorry not see it is not, not having any uh, unit so it is only 0.3 uh, percent uh, we can say the division we have got not the percentage of 0.3 uh, division we have got okay